Tonight's guests are Donna Wells Fink and Jackie Reister. Donna and Jackie, welcome to the show. Thanks, Vic. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, it's great having you. Thank you for your time. Donna, you've been on the show several times before, but for anyone listening who hasn't heard any of those episodes, please tell us about yourself. Jackie and I actually got together and started looking for Bigfoot, the Dogman. After I read about everything in Linda Godfrey's book, I discovered that Bigfoot was close by us, like nine miles away. I assume maybe Jackie would be interested in going because she's always crazy, too. So we started looking for Bigfoot and we ran into all kinds of bizarre happenings with Bigfoot. And of course, we were interested in the Beastabray Road. You know, we've been out there a few times, but we didn't know anything that was going on locally, currently or anything. And then I started reading about and seeing things about Lee Hample, who has a hayfield out on Bowers Road that's adjacent to Bray Road. He was warned by the neighbors that the werewolf lives on his property, and he didn't believe it, of course. You can listen to his old recording with you. And he didn't believe it, but he put up trail cams, and he has the most outstanding evidence of anyone I've ever seen. Probably Skinwalker Ranch has a lot, but they don't really share everything with everybody. And I think Lee is the next best thing. It looks like pictures of the beast coming out of a portal. He has the beast walking across the field. He has orbs. He has all kinds of UFOs on his property. And he catches it all on trail cam. And he has all kinds of phenomena and maybe even has Bigfoot. We're not sure. But at times, the beast has stood right in front of his trail cameras and turned the trail cameras and move things. I heard the other day that He has a shepherd's hook with uh, wind chimes on it out in the field and something bent that shepherd's hook. And, you know, that's steel or iron. I'm not sure which, but it bent the shepherd's hook over and he figures it was probably the Beast of Bray Road. And with all the excitement that goes on, at least I wasn't sure at first what was going on in his property until I saw a video that he did in his car and with a single light trailing him down Bray Road. Jackie and I have had that exact same thing happen to us. We had a triangular light follow us away from the Bigfoot woods. That's when I knew for sure that Lee was for real and that there was really things going on there and it's current. And we spent one night out there until about two o'clock in the morning, Diane and Jackie and I, I think the only thing that was seen was a tall, dark being walked behind the vehicle that Diane saw out at Lee's. And then when the uh, video came out or when his trail cam pictures, he was able to access those. And there's one picture of me standing in the field by the marsh where we think the dogman spends a lot of time. It looks like there's a lightsaber coming out of the hand on my shoulder and a creature's face next to mine. And Lee sent that to me and I said, I had no idea there was anything anywhere near me. That night, like I said, Diane saw it go behind the vehicle. And so that was pretty good, but you know, that's still not seeing the real thing with your own eyes. So we keep going back and we went back how long ago? About a month or so oh, really? when it was when it was really windy. Oh yeah, it's more early. Yeah. And it was so windy, but we stayed out there late. And the first thing we heard right away were two wolf howls that sounded almost human coming from the marshy area. I thought it was coming from the field next door. And I aimed my flare on the field and there was absolutely nothing there. Then later, these two told me that the howls were actually coming from the marsh And we did walk back there, but there was nothing there at that point. And then nothing else happened that night. We had to leave fairly early because the winds were so strong. You couldn't even hear anything or do anything. You know, we just consider that, you know, it was fun, but you're still not seeing the Beast of Bray Road. Also, Lee told me the other day that he has heard voices out there, English-speaking voices, 
like two voices carrying on a conversation, but he can't really understand what they're saying. And a friend of his also heard something similar along the north fence line of Lee's property. And then Jackie and I were out there the other day and Lee gave us permission to leave fried chicken (laughs) in front of one of his trail cameras. He hasn't viewed the pictures yet, but he said that later that the trail camera was bent sideways on the pole and something had moved it. So I'm still waiting to hear if anything showed up on camera, but just because it's there doesn't mean you're always going to see it on the cameras. Somehow that works. I don't know how. And then one day we were out there because we just keep going. We want to see the beast. Yeah. If he's out there, we want to see him. So we keep going. And we found lots of prints on Lee's property. And some of them were actually rectangular in shape. And some were like wolf prints. And I'm not sure what the rectangular prints are from, but another group found the same thing. So I guess there's something out there that's very strange, and I don't know what to make of that. I don't know if it's some kind of mechanical equipment or the dogman or the UFOs or whatever might be using, or if, I don't know, does something have a rectangular-shaped foot? I have no idea. I don't think so, but it was very strange to get those pictures. And then the reason why we went on Wednesday again we're probably going out there every twice every every week, I think. The reason why we went out there the other day again on Wednesday was because we're looking for, there have been two sightings of a large shaggy black dog. And Lee said that his neighbor saw it standing out in the middle of his hay field and told him about it. And it had a, a white chest, but it was black all over. Then Jackie's friend told her about seeing a large black shaggy dog eating roadkill on the side of the road. Do you want to tell him about what happened, Jackie? He just texted me and said that he was out on Bray Road and there was a strange and scary looking black dog that looked at him. He didn't get any pictures or anything, but he said it was just a strange looking shaggy black dog. And it was eating roadkill. Eating roadkill, yeah. Which is what the Beast of Bray Road is known for, eating roadkill. So then we thought, okay, well, I'm an animal lover and so is Jackie. And we thought, okay, there's one or two things. It's one of the beasts or his family because Lee seems to think that there's at least five out there, five dogmen. And so is it one of the smaller ones? We don't know. Or is it a dog that's lost and needs to be found and rescued? So we're going to go out there and look. That's our goal. Find out what it is. If I say here, doggy, doggy, when we see it and it stands up on two legs, we're going to be very shocked. So I'm not sure we haven't seen this black shaggy dog that everyone's talking about. And we hadn't seen anything until Wednesday when we went out there in the late evening. We had walked the length of like the whole soybean field through the woods and along the woods and didn't see anything, didn't hear anything, see anything. We didn't know anything was going on. And then all of a sudden we walked back to the car and we're getting ready to go. And Jackie started yelling that she saw something. And she's going to have to tell you about that because I didn't see it. I was looking towards the woods when she was telling me that. And actually, he was out in the soybeans. So, Jackie, will have to tell you this part. There's a a dirt path for um, tractors and whatnot that goes along the woods between the woods and the soybeans. So we were just walking and looking and we went all the way down and we're like, we better go. You know, it's getting dark and nothing's happening. So as we headed back to the car. We were almost back to the car, and we were discussing amongst ourselves on, we haven't seen anything for a long time, but by ourselves, you know, we've seen pictures and heard stories, but our own eyes haven't seen anything. So I turn around, something said, Jackie, turn around. And as I was getting in the car, I'm like, Donna, there it is, something standing in the field. And it's black, and she's looking along the dirt path. And so I had her camera, 
and she had it on video and I got it on video and it took a step. I saw it move because I said to her, it's moving down it's moving. And so then I took the video and then we tried to drive closer to it, but the field is rocky and the camera was <laughs> hither and yon. <laughs> and so that's as far as that went. But I did see some black object in the soybeans. One of the important things is that we were talking all along the path to directing our talks to the beast and saying, we're not here to hurt you. We're not here to harm you. We're just here. We want to see you. If you don't mind, could you just show yourself or let us hear something? And maybe that's what worked because but we were also howling. Yeah, we were. Oh, yeah, we were doing wolf howls, too. So maybe that attracted it. I don't know. But he graced us. Once we got back to the car, he came right out into the soybean field. And he was probably there at least a couple of minutes, wasn't he? Long enough for us to get in the car and head toward it. Yeah. All while the camera's waving all over. <laughs> but it is on camera. <laughs> yeah. It's waving, but like I told you, you guys did a really good job. You held it together enough to at least catch it on film. It's on film. Yep, it's on film. A couple times. It's on there a couple times. So, yeah. You deserve a lot of credit for that. Before we go any further, I think now's a great time to show the video that Don and Jackie took of the beast that day. The version of that video you're about to see on the YouTube version of tonight's show is a stabilized version of that video that Carrick St. Laurent cleaned up and stabilized for them. While I'm showing the video on the YouTube version of tonight's show, I'm also going to play an audio analysis that Carrick sent me analyzing the video and sharing his opinions and thoughts on it. All right, let's do that now. Hello, Vic. I'm really sorry that I can't make it to the podcast today. As I said, I'm feeling a bit under the weather here, but I would like to be able to, in my own words, provide you with a snippet of my findings on the footage, if that's something you want to include. So, the footage Donna sent me of the uh, the alleged Beast of Bray Rose sighting that she and her partner had, it takes place in this patch of a soybean field, and I believe they're filming it from the car, and unfortunately the camera's quite shaky, but that's something that stabilization can't help, luckily. So, as I stabilized the footage, the goal was to kind of orient the center of stabilization around the figure that appears at the edge of the woods in the footage, so that that way, as the camera shakes, the center of the movement, so to speak, is stable on that figure, meaning everything is moving around it, but it's staying still as much as you can if it's appearing in and out of frame sort of thing. So what this shows me, essentially, as I do this, is it's showing me the sort of still image, so to speak, of this figure as opposed to a shaky moving one, and gives us an idea of what it would look like if, as a stable camera or even a stable observer, you were looking straight on at it. Unfortunately, I do have to say that there is a lack of movement that this figure, or whatever it is, portrays in the footage. There is what appears to be some visual movement, but it's important to recognize that whenever those movements take place, the rest of the background is moving in the same way. Which, what that tells me is, that's not movement, it's a sort of motion blur or a motion warp created by the shakiness of the camera. So, what I want to say as well is, this is of course not to say that Donna and her research partner did not see something or did not observe actual movement. What it shows us is that it was not captured on film, if it did happen. What I would suggest to be a good stepping stone forward, let's say, in this analysis, would be to go to the same spot and take photographs from the exact same angle, because what that will show us is, okay, well, even if there's no movement in the footage, if the figure that was there before is not there now, even if it didn't move in the footage, it's clearly moved since the footage, which would tell us that it's an actual thing that moves and is therefore a living subject of some kind. I hope this provides some clarity for people. And uh, again, this is not to say that this report is not necessarily a valid report. It's just that the footage does not show us what the report is uh, entailing happened either before or after the footage was taken, unfortunately. I hope this provides some clarity. 
How far would you say that dog man is from you as you're filming it? Oh, oh we we're going to go out and try to measure. Probably, oh, I wouldn't even know. Oh, don't ask me. I'm I don't so know. Bad I don't at- know. I would say a quarter of a mile, maybe not that far. Eighth of a mile? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. He came out of the woods right where we had just walked by, and he never made a sound or made a move towards us. Do you think it's a coincidence that's where he came out of the woods, or do you think it's intentional? Oh, uh, I think it's intentional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, we were asking to see him, and you know, he's not going to come out and stand right in front of you, but at least she got the message somehow to turn around because otherwise we would have just gotten in the car and taken off. And she turned around one more time and there he was. I think he just graced us with his presence. Yeah. You know, but I don't, he's not out there to hurt anyone. And we let him know that we're not going to hurt him or do anything like that. And so once we were far enough away, he figured he could show himself, you know, they show themselves right in front of, these trail cameras. They're seen when they want to be seen and when they don't want to be seen. You can tell that things have gone on, but there's nothing on video. And so I think that they just come out when they feel like it and there's nothing that's going to change that. You're right. Yeah, they operate on their own schedules and they do what they want to do and they do it when they want to do it. So you're definitely right about that. Maybe because we asked him nicely. Yeah, you never know. That might play into it. It's hard to say. It could. could. Ladies, you did a great job. Before we get back to tonight's show, I wanted to let you know that the premium membership program is up and running. As a premium member, you wouldn't have to listen to commercials and also you'd have full access to bonus episodes. If you'd like to find out more about how to become a premium member, please go to dogmanencounters.com forward slash podcast. All right, let's get back to the show. From what I understand, you two went back to that place where you saw the Beast of Bray Road not long after that happened, and something unexpected happened. Please expand on that for us. Well, we went back a couple of days later because now we know it's there. We want to see it closer this time. Yeah. 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 It's not good enough with my video. We got to get closer. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're always looking to just have that full on picture unquestionable picture yeah and see it you know and we're not out to prove that it exists we don't care if you believe us we're just out having fun it's an adventure and the more spooky it is the better we like it so we walked on that path again and we went towards the area where we thought that the dog man the beast had come out of the woods because it looked like there was a trail going through this one area and We kept talking to the beast again, as usual, and saying that we weren't there to harm him. We just wanted to see him and could he show himself or let us hear him or something. I took a picture into the woods where this sort of a trail was cut through there because it's very dense woods. It's very hard to get through. I just took a picture just because I thought that's where he had come from. And I didn't notice He was even in the picture. I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. And then I loaded, uploaded the picture to our Facebook group, the Beast of Bray Road. And one of the members said, well, there's something in that picture. And I looked and I said, how could I have missed that? You can obviously see the two black legs, the right hand, part of the left arm and left hand. And his head, it's wolf-like with two tall ears at the top. There's a lot of leaves going across his chest, so that's not quite so visible. But if you can't see those two big black legs standing there, then I don't know what to tell you because he is obviously standing there. And I can't believe that I was standing that close to him and got a picture and I didn't even know it. Well, when they want to be, they can be awfully sneaky, so that doesn't surprise me. When you two went back there, Jackie, did you look for prints where you saw him standing? Oh, yes. We always look for prints. And we usually find prints, whether it be the square ones or wolf-like prints. In fact, we saw prints that were deep into the soil. And it, it hasn't rained here, and the soil is too hard. So whatever stepped there was heavy because it went down in a little ways. 
So that was quite amazing. Yeah, those prints were about an inch and a half deep at least. And we weren't even leaving anything other than an outline of our feet. We weren't sinking at all. The ground is hard as a rock. So whatever it is, is pretty heavy. Yeah, must have been. If you've had a dogman encounter and would like to speak with me about it, whether in private or on the show, please go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. If you've had a Bigfoot sighting and would like to be a guest on one of my two Bigfoot shows, please go to mybigfootsighting.com and let me know. We've established the fact that it was heavy, but how tall do you think it was? Oh, boy. We're going to go back and do a reenactment, but in the meantime... Well, I would say, well, this picture that Donna has could have was it has to be at least seven feet tall. Yeah, he's a pretty big boy. And the one that I saw, I'm six feet tall. So if I stand where he is and Donna takes the picture where I take the picture, we can judge. Yeah, and we'll be able to, to tell after that. But, you know, we could also see that in the picture that it's a male. I just can't believe I have as much detail on that picture as I was able to get. Now we just want to see him up close, right in front of the headlights when we're in the car with the doors locked (laughs) and the windows up. We want to see full on and just stand there and model for us because we're going back. We're not going to stop. Be careful what you wish for. Just might happen. Oh, (laughs) yeah. We hope so. Yeah, you never know. It just might. I couldn't tell from looking at the video, but were you able to see if it had a tail? No, it looked like it was facing us and stepped toward us. Maybe it was crouched down or bent over at the end there. I couldn't really tell, but I couldn't see the back part of it. And in that picture I got of it in the woods, I don't see any evidence of a tail, but his tail could have been up. You know, I don't know. Or it's behind him. Yeah. So if he's facing us, I don't know. Who knows? I don't really know if he has a tail or not. Well, you two had so much in your minds. It's totally understandable why you didn't stick around to try and find out if he had a tail or this anatomical feature or that. I get it. I can understand why you two got out of there the way you did. Well, if I had known that he was in those woods when I took that picture, there's no way we would have left. No, and when we saw him in the, oh, when I was taking the video, we were driving toward him and then he was gone. So we didn't really want to leave. It was just, he was, wasn't there. Yeah, he yeah. went back into the woods that time. And then it was getting darker so we couldn't really see. It was just time for us to leave, we thought. And we went back just so we could find him again. And that's when Donna got the picture. Well, I said it before and I'll say it again. You guys did well. You two have made countless trips there to the Bray Road area, obviously, in an attempt to have an encounter with the beast. But when you've gone there doing that, how much fear was involved? I'm not scared. No. <laughs> no. Jackie, at all. Jackie has a death wish. I'm not scared and at all. As long as I'm with someone who's not afraid. I mean, if somebody's really scared, I wouldn't want to go with them. Jackie's has a death wish, so mm. we're just going and... I don't think they're going to hurt us. I We just talk to them and just like the Bigfoot by us, we just talk to them and our Bigfoot are so used to us now. We see evidence that they're still around, but they really don't pull pranks on us like they used to too much. We have asked the Bigfoot if they would let us know if they're around. And, you know, one time we heard mumbling voices and that seemed to be far away yet close. And I'm not sure how that works unless they were on the other side of a dimension or something. But we always go with, you know, we're not armed. We always go with good intentions in our heart. So I think that goes a long way. Plus, we're females. And I think they're less threatened by females. So maybe that's why he wasn't so hesitant to just come on out. But he's been out in the middle of the field in the daytime when Lee's been standing in his hay field and Lee saw him. He saw him stand on walking on two legs and then it went down on all fours and then he went back up on two legs. And Lee has pictures of that. He said he takes pictures because the pixels are better. That might have been a mistake on our part to do a video of the beast, but the excitement of the moment, we just, I turned the video on and we got what we got. And 
he's there. He's blacked out in the middle of that soybean field. And, you know, if somebody doesn't believe it, that's fine. But we know we saw. Yeah, we were just excited because this is our lifelong, one of our dreams. (laughs) And it, it came true. So we'll be going back and see how much closer we can get to the dog bin. Well, it goes without saying, I'm happy for you. That's definitely one box you can check off. So that's great. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it sure is. For anyone who's listening to tonight's show, thinking about heading out to the Bray Road area in hopes of having their own sighting, what would you say to them about that, Jackie? I would say drive on by, see what you can see. Yeah, you never know if you're going to drive by him when he's eating roadkill because that's how he was first seen. Way back in the day, or if he's standing along the fence line. Well, there's corn now, and there's crops are up now, so it'd be harder to see them unless he is in the road right now. But when the corn is harvested, by all means, drive out and see what you can see. Yeah, you know, you can park and walk down the road, but it's all private property along Bray Road. And from our experience, the police are very vigilant in that area. Diane and her sister tried to get a picture of just the road sign. They were on the corner of Highway 11 and Bray Road. And the police pulled over and asked them what they were doing. And they just said, we're just taking a picture of the road sign. And it apparently you can't even do that out there. So it's not a good place to park along stop. the side of the road. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't stop you're likely to be told, you can stop, but if you do, they're likely to come and find you and and tell you to move along. And I've also walked Bowers Road by myself before I knew Lee. And it's just all wide open fields, except when the corn is up. And that's the scariest time because you never really know what's in the corn. Because one time I was out by the Bigfoot Woods where we go and I heard a bird call from my left and then one from my right and then one from out in the corn. And it wasn't really a bird call. It was, I think it was Bigfoot signaling each other that someone was there. So they're out in the middle of the corn too. You can try and park somewhere, but you're probably going to be told to move along. And if you go on somebody's property, you're definitely going to be in trouble. Wow. If the police officer stopped you from Taking pictures of the road sign, that's really strict. Yeah, that's bad. That is. And that could be from the residents that live out there, too, because there's several farms out there, and maybe people stop and question, and they get tired of being questioned. I really don't know. Yeah, especially the guy that has the carved statue of the Beast of Bray Road in his front yard. Yeah. Well, you know what he has now? Vic, he carved a statue of a Bigfoot out of another tree. (laughs) So to me, he's really looking for a lot of people to be stopping by his house. But I heard he gets grumpy. I don't know why you'd carve something like that if you weren't prepared for people to be stopping and taking pictures of it. But now he's got a Bigfoot out there. And I would love to talk to this guy and see if he's seen anything. But we haven't stopped there yet. Yeah, if that's what he's done, he's lucky someone doesn't take a pot shot at those guys. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, exactly. What, oh, well, the, the statue of the beast is chained down, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, the beast has chains around him so nobody can steal him. That's a good idea, because if it wasn't chained down, it probably would be stolen. He's so famous. Although, in the city of Elkhorn, there is not one thing of memorabilia about the Beast of Bray Road whatsoever. I mean, I've been in shops there, and everywhere and there's nothing i can't believe that that city doesn't cash in on their beast i mean other places look at point pleasant and the mothman and other areas where there's famous creatures and they have a museum and they take advantage of it and they make a lot of money and you would think elkhorn would do that but nope Mm -hmm. they don't and none of lee's neighbors will tell you that there's anything out there either The funny thing is, is I went next door to Lee's one time before I knew Lee and I knocked on the lady's door and an old lady came to the door and I asked her about Lee and I asked her if she's seen anything out there. And she's like, no, no, that's not true. That's just all made up, blah, blah, blah. And then come to find out from Lee that that is the same lady next door who's since passed away, but 
she's the one that told Lee that he has the Beast of Bray Road living in his hay field. And so nobody's going to tell you anything. None of his neighbors will tell you, um, except they'll tell Lee because they know he owns property there and they've gotten to know him, but they're not going to tell anybody else. Oh, of course. Yeah, it's funny how that works, isn't it? Mm-hmm. If I wasn't so old, I would open a, a museum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm far too old to start anything like that now, though. Oh, come on now. Spring chicken. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> huh. You two have obviously spent a lot of time on Bray Road, but have you ever spent any time researching the Kettle Moraine? I have. I used to go with Kim before my surgeries when I was feeling better, and I've heard of tales of Bigfoot and the Dogman in the Kettle Moraine. The neighbors towards the entrance of the cattle who have farms there, the pigs were attacked and big, long scratches on their backs, and some of them were eaten. And And then another neighbor moved because she continued to hear drumming and chanting in the Kettle Moraine, and it just spooked her so bad that they finally moved. And I know Jay goes out there a lot, and he's had some experiences, but we haven't been out there lately. We figure that we've got Bigfoot close to the house, and we've got the Beast of Bray Road, and basically, we've got our hands full. <laughs> we did also visit the quarry where the one young man said that when he was working, he saw the dog man, and we didn't see anything, but that area is close to Price Park in Elkhorn. And so if anyone really wants to go to Price Park, there's evidence of Bigfoot there and the dog man. If you want to go somewhere and you don't want to get pulled over by the police, that would be a good place to start. There's definitely no lack of great places in Wisconsin to search for dog men. That's a fact. That's right. I'm sure a lot of the listeners don't know what the Kettle Moraine is and why it would be such a great place for dog men to make a living. Please fill them in on that. The Kettle Moraine is where the glacier did not go, and it's hills and valleys and forests, and there's wetlands there, and there's trees, and there's all kinds of places for anything to live and to hide. It's, it's just perfect habitat for wildlife. Yeah, and the Kettles, it's called Kettle Moraine because of the dips in the land that formed like kettles in the... When the glacier melted. Yeah. Anything could be in there. I, I have no doubt. It, and it's beautiful. And it's it big. covers many, many miles, many square miles. And yeah. there's hiking and there's trails and there's all kinds of things to do. In Horseback there. riding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot to do there. And if you just pay attention when you go in those places and don't dismiss everything you hear and see, you might just see something that could be a Bigfoot or a dog man. I completely believe they're in there. I think they're anywhere where there's woods and water and marshes, especially. Lee has just a small marshy area, and that's where the beast has been seen the most. So for some reason, they like marshy areas. So if there's marsh, you should go there because there might be something around. Is the kettle a national forest? I think it is. I think it's national. Yeah, it could be. We'll have to research. <laughs> yeah. There's the southern kettle, yeah. the southern kettle moraine that's closer to us. And then there's the northern part that's up by Sheboygan, right? Mm -hmm. And up there. So it's just a huge, massive area. And then the farther north you go in Wisconsin, the deeper the woods get. But they're all over. There's been many sightings of Bigfoot up in northern Wisconsin. And I've heard in the Kettle Moraine, both areas that Bigfoot and Dogman, you know, you can see tree structures that are more than likely made by Bigfoot, and those are found in the Kettle Moraine too, and in Price Park. I've seen evidence of Bigfoot in there. So if somebody's looking to go somewhere, the Kettle Moraine or Price Park, Price Park is in Elkhorn, and I wouldn't doubt it if the Beast of Bray Road travels through there from time to time. It's not far from Bowers. No, it's not far from Lee's. Yeah, you're probably right. It probably does travel then. Well, it's about time for us to get out of here. But before we do, I'd like to get some closing comments from you too. Jackie, please go first. Well, I had an experience today that, Ooh, um, yeah. that I, I would like to share. 
Donna sent me a picture when I was over here last night at her house. I had my dog and we were on the couch and she took a picture. So she sent that to me and she sent me the video because I hadn't, she didn't send that to me before. And the picture of the beast itself. And then when I was looking at them this morning, scrolling through, the picture of the sketch of the dog man eating roadkill came up on my phone. And I thought, why would Donna send that to me? She didn't. And it wasn't there. I tried to save it. It wasn't there. But I know I saw it. So that appeared when I was looking through the pictures this morning. It's the picture that Linda Godfrey drew. And I don't have it in my pictures on my phone. It's nowhere. But I saw it this morning. So I, I just thought that was kind of odd. And I didn't send it to her. I Because I'm like, Donna, why would you yeah. send me that? No, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> and, you know, maybe that's the dog man. I keep waiting, honestly, Vic, I keep waiting for that beast to let me know that he knows where I live. Because the last time uh, we saw Weir Boy, you know, he's a shapeshifter, I also had a wolf cross the road right in front of my husband and I when we were driving into town. We don't have wolves down here. We're so far south, we're almost in Illinois. We don't have wolves down here. And this looked like a brown timber wolf. And this was right after we saw Weir Boy. That wolf came up from the shoulder, crossed the road right in front of our car. At first, we thought it was going to be a deer. And then we realized it was a wolf. And it sauntered across the road in front of us and then just went off into the woods on the other side. And I said, that is that Weir Boy letting us know that he knows where we live, because I truly believe it's like skinwalkers at the Pentagon. I think that they know they find you and they let you know they found you. So I keep waiting. I keep asking Jackie, have you seen anything? Have you heard anything yet? And she says, no, and I haven't either. So until this picture showed up. Yeah, until that picture showed up for no reason. It was very strange because I thought, why would she send me that? Yeah. And I didn't because I, I went back through all my messages and I hadn't sent Jackie that picture. And it's not in there now. So I don't know. It was weird. It was bizarre. Well, maybe a, that dog man got his hands on the cell phone and he's who sent that to you. <laughs> yeah, right. Hopefully. And so yeah. hopefully when she was sleeping. When I was sleeping. Yeah. So hopefully he'll be there and we go back. Maybe that's what the sign is. Yeah. That's what we're hoping. Yeah. You never know. He just might be. And Donna, I sure hope where a boy doesn't know where you live. Yeah, that wouldn't be good at all. And I'll tell you what, Donna, for all the listeners who are wondering what we're talking about when we mention old Weir Boy, please tell them about the run-in you had with him. Oh, <laughs> Lord. This is our, one of our first adventures. Yeah. We were driving down Highway 59 towards Whitewater, going to our Bigfoot area where we know Bigfoot lives. And we saw he looked normal. He was on the opposite side of the road. I was driving 55. And you could see from a long ways away that this guy had hair that was matted. I don't know what, six inches at on least, his head? At least. And, and matted at his shoulders where it hung in a ball. And it looked like he crawled out from under a bed of leaves after two years. But he had a perfectly clean sweatshirt it was a hoodie and he had on a flannel shirt and blue jeans and then his shoes were skippers skipper shoes that's what jackie <laughs> calls them yeah they're actually ked's slip-ons which is really weird but they were clean we were shocked enough by the hair so we were watching him as we drove by and he tilted his face up and looked at us and we both screamed at the same time you described what he looked like he was Oh, he had like a furrowed brow and he had these teeth were horrific. They were big and square and yellow. And he was just just creepy looking and his eyes were dark and sunken in. And his mouth went from ear to ear. His teeth were like two or three times the size of our teeth. They were perfectly straight and square, and square. flat but they were yellow and streaked with green and brown. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he was grinning at us. And he, he looked right at us. Yes, he, he did. He like pierced us. It was kind of scary because that was our first, one of our first encounters with anything. Right. And so we went past him and we made a U-turn to come back so, because I had my video camera with me. This was before cell phone videos. And I had my video camera 
and my camera with me. And I said, we're going to get a picture of this guy, but we're not going to pull over next to him because he's going to jump in the bed of the truck and he's going to turn into a wolf and scare the, you know, what out of us. And so we went past him and pulled in at the next street by the cemetery, turned the car around, aiming it out towards the road. And as soon as he was going to walk by, we were going to get video and pictures of this guy. I was going to pull up closer and get a good video. And wouldn't you know it, here goes a, a white van going the opposite direction that he was going. And it was an unmarked brand new white van. And Jackie said, they're going to pick him up. They're going to pick him up. And I said, nobody's going to pick him up. Would you pick him up? And sure enough, that van did a U-turn pulled over. Now they were behind two big trees, of course, so we couldn't get video because there's two big trees in the cemetery that were blocking our view. And then they did another U-turn and took off with him going towards Whitewater. I pulled out going 70 and we never saw- We never saw hide or hair of that van. No. Looked down all the side roads, all the driveways, all the everything. And we we went all over in Whitewater to look for that van and we never saw it again. And then after that is when the wolf appeared near my house and, you know, made us stop the car while he just sauntered across. And if that's not a shape shifter, I'm not sure what else would be. What would you two have done if you would have been out there on foot? An old weary boy would have come walking down the road the opposite direction and come past you. Oh, oh. <laughs> we're pretty uh, new to this game, so we yeah. probably would have ran the other way. Yeah, that was what, 2012? At least 2012. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that was in the very beginning. You know, when we first started looking for Bigfoot, we were scared to even go near the woods, even in the daytime. <laughs> and then pretty soon, you know, we were going into the woods all the time, daylight, whatever. And then the first time we're going to go in the woods at night, a UFO showed up (laughs) and hovered next to the woods for 45 minutes. And we were so scared that we didn't take a picture. I didn't want the lights in the truck to come on because then they would know we were there and then they'd take us and probe us. Yeah, we 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 feared that. Yeah, we feared (laughs) probing. So we just sat and watched it in the truck and we were so scared. But after that, we started chasing it and everything. And We never got a a good picture of it, but it was there. It returned five more weeks in a row. I don't know whether Bigfoot created that that UFO and tried to scare us into not coming into the woods at night, or if they're working together with time travelers, or I'm not sure what's going on. I think they're all related, intertwined somehow. Yeah. I really do. Could be. They might be. You never know. Well, Donna, Jackie's already given us her closing comments. Please give us yours now. My closing comments are yippee. We finally got to see it. And even though I didn't see it till I saw the video, I was close to him in that other picture of the woods. And it was just an exciting day for us. It's just amazing. And, you know, we were just blessed somehow, I think, maybe because we were telling him that we're not going to hurt him and please come out and show yourself. And that's what he did. We can get replies like that sometimes from Bigfoot, too, but not all the time. It was exciting. And we're just going to keep going because, you know, we just want to see him again. You know, he's there. Mm-hmm. I've got the feeling that's definitely not your last run in with the Beast of Bray Road or Dogmen in general, for that matter. So, yeah, who knows what the future holds? Oh, fingers crossed. Oh, yeah. No, not a chance. Not with us. Yeah. (laughs) Fingers crossed, Vic. Fingers crossed. (laughs) No, I think you're right. I think there's more ahead. But having said that, I want to thank you two so much for coming on and sharing the details of that experience with us. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Just spread the word. He's still there. (laughs) He sure is. He definitely is. And you're welcome. Thanks again so much. Have a great night.